Jeremy S. Cook here. And what you see here is a Raspberry Pi based plant watering machine. But it's probably not like any other Pi based plant watering machine that you've ever seen. It does water on a timer and it's got a, a button that you can do to trigger it manually. But as you see when you zoom out, it's actually a Keurig coffee maker converted to a water machine. I mean, why not? My wife had a, a Keurig that she was not using, or I shouldn't say not using, it got jammed up after about 10 years of use. And I, I got it working, but then I realized it was pretty nasty inside. So we decided to call that one a day and buy a new one. The other one looks pretty good on our counter now, but this one, I just couldn't bear to get rid of it. So after thinking about it for about a month or two, I finally proposed an article for arrow.com about an automatic plant water machine. They were nice enough to let me do it. And I, uh, this is kind of like the behind the scenes of what I had to do to get it done. I'll put a link to it in the description. The biggest challenge was taking this apart. I mean, if you look on the internet, which I guess is on the internet about people taking this machine apart, it's uh, notoriously hard to get into and possibly for good reason. I mean, it's, it's a uh, runs on mains power and it has to consume quite a bit of current, certainly to, to heat the water up so fast. So obviously you don't want civilians like myself getting into it. And I guess I should just say, don't try this at home or do it at your own risk. But uh, tearing that open, you can see the circuit board inside. Clip that off with my little little nippers. And the cool thing is this, this circuit board where it's at, it's nicely protected inside the innards of this whole thing. And it's perfect size for a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a, a small circuit board as well. Small breadboard, I should say. So it's pretty cool when you get it opened up. It looks like some sort of like you know, like 60s science fiction experiment with, you know, some sort of like time tube in the middle or something. Along with the supposed time tube, there's quite an array of piping on the end. The long and short of it is when you put voltage into the air pump, which is the, the thing closest to my right hand right now, it pumps air into the system and then pumps coffee out the other end. Or in this case, just plain water. I didn't really analyze the hydraulic circuit, but that seems to be the effect of everything. Put water in and it's not really doing anything there. Th those of you that are experienced with Keurigs, because I don't really use this much, you actually have to take the handle up, let it fill the chamber in the inside, seal it down again. And then at that point, it pumps the water out nicely. Yep, looking good. And of course the heating portion is not used whatsoever. And so you turn that up a little bit, turn the voltage up and it pours nicely. It's gonna be going off five volts off the Raspberry Pi and a 2N2222 NPN transistor. So it should have plenty of plenty of power to make it make it go. Of course it might be possible to stuff the Raspberry Pi Zero W in that chamber for the original electronics and just have it, you know, wire everything together in kind of a spaghetti style, as I've certainly done before. But in this case, I decided to go ahead and design it carefully with like a 3D printed sled type assembly. So I could just assemble everything outside of the, the Keurig, lock it down, everything, make sure everything was just, just how I wanted it. And then I could just slide it in and in theory I'd have all kinds of room left over. Should be should be great. So I'm I'm designing everything based on the Raspberry Pi Zero W dimensions. See kind of a dummy dummy drawn out there, and then I made these studs for it to attach to. And since I base this on the actual Raspberry Pi Zero W drawing, everything should fit up absolutely correctly. Or that was the idea at least. What what I didn't have drawings for was the Keurig. So I made it just a tiny bit too big and it just wasn't wasn't gonna slide in there, at least not with some out some modification. But instead of that I used the quick prototyping ability of my my printer and you know, a couple hours later slides in perfectly. So I attached the headers to the W and then I attached it down with these these plastic screws. These screws are great because they don't conduct electricity, but at the same time, it's not like they're a tiny bit magnetic as with the metallic screws, which, you know, you find you actually rely on that quite a bit. Added some more standoffs because it wasn't quite big enough to let the let the, uh, the ports and stuff go over the little breadboard. And look at that. 
back to the Keurig, slides in perfectly. You can see the DC, DHT11 temperature humidity sensor there, which I didn't end up using. I used a moisture level sensor with an amp that's kind of, kind of the same sort of shape, but a little different, obviously. There's the Keurig hooked up kind of in a test, test mode. Just see how it would work. And look at that, that plant looks really, really unhealthy. I changed that out later in the video, so, so don't worry, I'm not gonna try to revive that plant from the dead. That'd be just, just too much work. So a little more water in there, and yeah, I learned my lesson the first time, lock it down, and here, here what I'm doing, I'm actually testing the current that it draws at five volts. Just wanna make sure that the transistor could handle it. And 0 0.03 amps, it's 30 milliamps. I mean, that's well within the ability of the transistor to, to handle and it could almost be handled by the Pi, but I'm not going to risk that. Besides just Pi control, I thought it'd be awesome to have a interface with the, the brew button itself. So there's red and, and blue LEDs that I can turn on with this. Use a resistor and like a power supply with this so I didn't burn them out. And you can see the crazy thing is the red, the red line is actually the ground here or acts as the ground. So that was a little bit of a confusion trying to diagnose all that. And I hooked up the buttons as normally open switches as well. That's a nice little thing. I could start the watering or, or whatever else I want to do with that over the Pi. And then what you have here is the final circuit diagram. I was really happy with how this breadboard turned out. Put a little bit of time in it to, to try to get it really nicely, nicely done. Also, these extra wires, I didn't really, really want to get rid of them just in case I needed them later. So I, I used some heat shrink, stuffed it into this cavity that where it wouldn't be bothered and yeah there it exists today the wires from the keurig were multi-strand so i i soldered them to a single strand wire did some heat trick on that and yeah it looks really nice there stuffed it in there and even though i thought i had all kinds of room before it it barely fit like every electronics project as for the sensor I had to mark out a little cavity there and whoop, like magic there is a slot there just somehow Maybe maybe I did a little bandsaw work with it. Who knows? After all that, it, it did fit in nicely, and it's time to screw the bottom back on. All things considered, I was pretty happy with the way it went back together. Looking good. So with this all with this all done, it was time to actually have a plant that I could use to put put in there. You can see the the dead the dead one there that wasn't any good but this beautiful beautiful jade plant i could put that in and hopefully keep it alive for for more than more than a couple weeks look at that beautiful soil so so nice so uh so lush i'm gonna set off with a couple rocks and hopefully it'll well it is good today so it's been it's been doing a good job keeping it alive watering it once a day at least The, the pot, pot for this I actually made on a, with a 3D printed mold, so you could see a, a video on that. I'll put that in the description, and there's actually an article on it in Popular Science, too, so, you know, check that out. I'll try to put links in, to that in the description as well. Here I'm inserting the sensor, and you can see the red light's on, which means it doesn't have enough water. It's, it's thirsty, quote-unquote. So I'll lock that down, press the button. And the blue light comes on with the red overtone to show that it's watering, even though it doesn't have sufficient water yet. Looking good. And now it's back to red. So it still doesn't have enough water, but I think it's not positioned correctly. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's great. So I didn't actually adjust the sensor before I installed it. So I was very happy that worked out correctly. Added some hot glue to protect it a little bit, and hopefully it'll be good. I actually, I've had some, <laughs> had a few little issues with it since then, so I may have to adjust it some more, but yeah, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty cool setup, really. Yeah, but you know, why not give it some more water? I'm doing a video here, right? Look at that, beautiful. So if, if somehow, sometime in your life, you find a Keurig machine that 
looks a little bit too nasty to use or but you know has a functional water pump then well now you know what to do it with it it's a really fun build so i'm, I'm really glad a little really happy with how this turned out and so far it's been really nice sitting there on my shelf so hope you enjoyed it if you did you know definitely give it a thumbs up consider subscribing or leave a comment thanks so much for watching this is jeremy s cook signing off